Um, yeah, so let's go. So again, BAF is in Montreal from 2.15 to 4.45. Um, and uh, please fill out the survey. <laughs> the button is already on our, on our thing on, on uh, the website. So um, hook us up if you like it. So I'm Frank Fabrero. I'm the CTO at Phase 2 Technology. I'm the moderator of the panel, but I won't be talking about uh, any particular solution. Uh, one of the things that I'm very interested in is how all of these problem, how all of these solutions fit the problems that my company has every day. And um, you know, even though some of the folks uh, talking are from my company, that's not to say that that's always the best solution. So I'm really interested in seeing what else is out there. Hi, um, my name is Neil Hastings. I'm a software architect for Phase 2 Technology. I'm going to talk about um, the single page uh, node approach. Um, basically, this is as much core as possible. So our, my mantra is more, use more core and use less contrib. So my solution is um, relies on several contributor modules also, but use more core with a couple of contribs. Um, the uh, bean module, which is a way to do block entities, um, a block references module. Um, uh, and a template field module are the primary modules that I'll be using, showing today. All right, so my name is Christoph. Uh, I'm also known as Svantel on Drupal.org and on Twitter. I am the lead maintainer of Display Suite and also a co-maintainer of the field group module. So um, there's a lot of reasons that why we have written Display Suite. I will talk a little bit of, the, of that when I'm going to give the demo because it's obvious when I'm going to give the demo why I've written this. So. I'm Chris Johnson. I'm a director of engineering at Phase 2. I'm going to be speaking about context and how we use it for layouts, even though the origins of context weren't really to solve a layout problem. Um, primarily, just the context module, which comes bundled with three other modules that we'll go through. And then I'll give some pointers as well to other modules that are a little more uh, layout friendly. Hi, my name is Matt Cheney. I'm a Drupal developer and Drupal distribution specialist uh, at Pantheon, um, based in San Francisco, California. For uh, a long time, I've been really into working on the panels module, and then more recently, the panels IP and panelizer module. And I'm going to try to convince you today why those tools are really awesome. And recently, I've uh, sort of tried to bundle all of those together into a standalone distribution called Panoply that sort of takes the best of the panels worlds and puts it together so that you can download it and have like, a pretty awesome solution in one place. And that's what I'll be doubling today. Well, that's way over there. Hi, I'm Chris Vanderwater. Um, I'm actually the uh, Drupal 8 um, Blocks and Layout initi Initiative owner. Uh, and oh, thank you. And uh, yeah, I'm here mostly just to kind of answer questions that you might have about core in relation to these things. Largely, my objective is to kill all of these modules. <laughs> All cool. right. Yeah, we're going to roll into the demos now. Uh, each person will get about five minutes, and I'll try and stick to that time. Five minutes to talk about how wonderful this is. So live demos, nothing will ever go wrong, I promise. So I'm going to, um, in, in past demonstrations, I've talked about um, the Bean module. So today, I'm going to focus a little more on the template field and how it controls your layout. Um, template field uh, module came out of a project we're working on um, where everything needed to be revisionable and translatable in the UI. So everything really much had to be around nodes. That's the only thing in Drupal 7 that was revisionable out of the box. Um, so the template field module um, basically turns templates into ctools exportables to allow you to export them. You can have them encode in files. Um, so um, examples of, here's some examples that I have pre-built. So a two-column layout, three-column layout. Um, you can have a carousel sort of stuff. Um, the actual page itself, we actually use a mustache template, template rendering engine. Uh, that rendering engine is swappable, but we're using mustache because that's what the editorial people seem to like a lot better than using the Drupal way. So that al allows them to, in the UI to build and version um, layouts um, in using mustache um, and a lot of added JS, CSS, um, and any Drupal core libraries to that page. And then we also have uh, ability to build out the um, input definition that the um, editorial team were actually used to fill in this information. So this puts a lot of, lot of control uh, in the UI as far as exactly how you want things to display. Um, so this is just a quick demonstration. Um, it, the module's template under field. Go check it out if you want to. I think we're in version alpha 50 or something. 
never, never have the lockdown of the API. Um, okay, so this is basically what it looks like, the constant editor. Uh, this is a, um, we're using template field here, and down here we're using something called um, formatter field. Formatter field module integrates the template field module, allows you to use templates as a formatter. So this actually controls a formatter of a um, field. So you can actually do that on the node edit form instead of in the, the field UI. So this gives a lot of control over how things are displayed. So the real use case is um, with the editorial staff means extremely highly customized pages, um, but you don't want to do a whole bunch of one-off TPL files or different layout discussions. Um, and you don't want to use panels. <laughs> so it's because yeah, panels can do all this. Um, so for example, you know, they have, the choose, they have the selection to choose different layouts, a lot of configurations here. So you have some basic ones, um, you can get more complex to do um, layouts that have um, images, background images. And I'm going to try this and hopefully this works well. Um, I won't use your images. Um, oops. Oh, I don't want that picture. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not even going to show you what it is. This is my <laughs> that's for a different demonstration later. Um, okay, so, so the, I mean, we have the ability to do really, really highly customized templates. And um, so this is the screen, this is an example of a screen in, in a content administrator would use and not something who's a site administrator. The site administrator are the ones that do the templates. Um, and so this thing, we have all sorts of options. These are all built out in the input definitions that I did before. Um, you can also do all sorts of stuff here. Um, I don't know what half this stuff does. I didn't build this one, but uh, white. All right, good enough. And you can add multiple items here. One of the really cool things about template field is um, if I want to add another one, it's just a basic. Um, this is just a basic content. Um, you have the full WYSIWYG, so you can do things like embedding content, embedding nodes, so anything you do in a WYSIWYG, you can do in here. Um, and that's really what we, in the project we use this on, we're really taking advantage of everything in the WYSIWYG that we can. So it's, that's a really huge piece. And this format, which allows you to do is we have a, um, a, 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 um, a uh, template called Carousel that is set to, that can be used with the formatter. So what this does is it takes each of the items in the um, different layers here and adds them as a slide on a carousel. And we're going to try that and see how awesome it works. Um, so we're just going to use the defaults. No. This didn't work before, so we'll see how it works. Oh, page title. Hi. Oh, and this is the page title. And the last um, thing on the node page I'm going to show you, this is the block reference module. So basically, um, this is this kind of thing. This came out of the energy.gov project. We use this really heavily with the Bean module. Um, it's the US Department of Energy um, to be able to place blocks in the content wheel in different spots. Um, and there's a lot of presentations on that already. I don't want to uh, spend time on that today. Um, so this is awesome slide, and I'm guessing it's not going to work. It's not going to work. But it works on our project, I, I promise. I'm almost out of time. That went really fast. Um, thanks. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs>I mean, I'm not going to name them all because it's impossible to do that. One of the things is that consistent markup for all your nodes or users or whatever entity that you have in your Drupal 7 uh, website. So that's really reason number one because if you, in, in the past what we did is like, okay, here's a node TPL, let's change it a little bit, but then you have a listing of, say, your articles, then you probably do that with views, right? And then you get different markup, so it's easy to change that, but by default, the markup is inconsistent with all other solutions in kind of a way. And we are trying to solve that, which is weird, <laughs> I guess. But um, to go to the demo, so for instance, if you go to structure, content types, um, you, get, you get two things, manage fields and manage display. So manage fields is where you're going to add new fields onto entities. And then you also have manage display, which by default does not do a lot. It only lists all the fields that come from field API. That's basically the only thing that you can do. People, for instance, miss the title field. They can't drag the title field around here. That's impossible. And it's by default hard-coded in the node TPL. That's basically where we were like, man, this doesn't work at all. We want to try and make sure that field UI becomes a little bit more, more smarter. In that sense, we're going to add more fields, more properties that are on the nodes, for instance, a title, a author, a 
there's a lot of other things. And also the ability to just inject any kind of property that you can think of. You can create new fields in code, they come onto field UI, and then you can do whatever you like. So also, um, it's to be like have a central place for your entity uh, thing. So the way that we work basically is we use page manager to work on the page level and the display of your individual entities is done for us at least in field UI. So basically that's the difference between how well other solutions work I guess. So field um, display suite at this point it's not enabled yet. So this is field UI how it looks like. Um, I'm going to go to modules and then display suite comes with four uh, modules. So display suite this is you have missed C tools. <laughs> Um, but I'll go on. So there's, um, there's four modules. Um, you have to enable the display suite um, core module, which will do a lot. And uh, what it does uh, for you is, um, come on, internet. Everybody stop using the internet. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I think Drupal.org is down. Oh. Copy from one of the other sites. Yeah. 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 But I'll go on. So the core module, what it does is going to enable you to select layouts for your entities and also um, yeah, okay. sorry, <laughs> um, so you'll be able to select a new layout. So there we, we ship with a couple of predefined layouts, a one column, two column, and et cetera, et cetera. And also we'll expose those properties like title, author, onto field UI. Um, the three other modules, there's display suite extras. They contain a lot of nice goodies, um, but they're not in the main module. Why? You don't really like need to use them all the time in different projects. But we do. I mean, it depends on the project and the solutions that you want to have. Um, so I'm not going to talk about the display suite extras because there's too many in them. But you can individually enable or disable uh, things in there. There's also the display suite search module. Um, who likes theming search results? <laughs> who, th who think it's easy? Nobody? Oh, OK. <laughs> but it, it's kind of. A, Pain in pain to like um, trying to to do CSS on on search results. So display suite search um, will take over Apache Solar uh, search pages. Also note um, so the the core uh, as well, and you will get pretty search results. You can put an image on the left and the body on the right, and well, yeah, you can go nuts basically. So let's enable. That's yes, that's good. All right. Um, okay, I have to go back to field UI. Sorry. So I actually have to go to structure. So there's a new uh, entry here called display suite. If you go over, oh, this is display suite first version. I asked for the second branch, but no problem. <laughs> no problem. No problem. No problem at all. But it's ba there's uh, there's actually two branches right now of display suite. Um, we're actually also having a uh, sprint after this session to try and get a new release for the first branch and possibly a release candidate for the second branch. But basically they do the same thing, but it's more user experience things that have been fixed in the second branch. But the important thing is here, you go to layout, you get an overview of all your entities that are in a Drupal website. So you see comment, article, taxonomy, term, user, Basically, node is more important. We switched that in the second branch because if you, have, if you have a lot of content types, your screen is going to be filled with common things first, which is stupid. We switched that, for instance. But basically, click on manage the display. Then you go back to field UI and nothing happens. This is the number one issue that I get in the issue queue. I enable display suite and nothing happens. I'm like, OK, what you need to do is go to a vertical tab here and actually select a layout. So we ship with a couple of layouts, you can either uh, create new layouts in your module or in your theme. So you can basically choose whatever you want to do. And so let's go select uh, two columns stacked. And what you basically now get is, what you see is the header, the left, the right, the footer, and all uh, the field API fields are here. And then you see the, all, all the other properties like the read more, user picture, links, title, comments, and tags. No, tags is field API, field API field, sorry. Uh, but you can add more, and now basically what you now have to do is just let's move fields uh, somewhere, right? Um, for instance, this is a title. I can put it on the right. Display suite gives you the ability to add new properties and also to configure them. So 
this is the field, uh, the title field. Do I want to have a link back to the entity? Say yes. Which wrapper do you want? And this is also extendable in, it's extendable, yes. Um, so that's basically what this play suite does from its core. And, and it, I've been doing this now for three years. And, and, and in the beginning, I had not so a clear vision on what it really did. This is what it does. It's an extension on field UI for Drupal Core 7. Um, to give you the ability to have, to have simple layouts and more properties uh, on entities. So that's it for my demo. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the history of Context and then jump into the demo. So Context first started in um, 2008 with the Drupal 5. And it had a little bit of work in Drupal 5, but then by the fall of that year, uh, it was actually moved into a, to the Drupal 6 uh, in terms of the version that it was working on. And I always like to describe Context as a graphical, a graphical interface for Drupal hooks. Um, what it does and, and what it was designed to do was take a lot of the boilerplate stuff that you would used to do by hard coding some PHP code in a hook and standardize the action that had to happen and extract the configuration part. So for example, if you wanted to do something where you would say that um, when a node is, term, is tagged with term X, I want you to put this block in the right rail, um, it would take care of the being able to say what X is and what Y is, and you would never have to code all of the code to actually do the, the placement again. Um, so sort of as a side effect of that, it, it formalized, quote unquote, the best way to do each of these particular little tasks, right? Because uh, context underneath its core, um, for each plugin, the plugin says, hey, context should execute this particular plugin at this particular hook point. And that's, that's how it actually operates. Um, so once, once you were able to extract that configuration, then we layer a UI on top of it and basically get all of that out of developers' hands and into site configurators and site administrators' hands. Um, it wasn't designed strictly as a layout tool. Um, it just as a side effect can get used for that. And I like to talk about it as, um, it actually has two functions. There's placement of particular items that it does really well, I think. And then there's uh, other reactions that you can use for, for actual layout, right? So layout might be uh, two column or three column or four column, uh, but then there's placement of items of what do you want to go into each column under which particular conditions. And those are sort of two separate things in the context world. So when you enable it, um, there, it comes with three modules and they're already enabled here. Um, but I'll run through them very quickly. The context module itself uh, is just named context, and it's the engine. It's what uh, allows you to have plugins and that type of thing. Um, so that's this one. You're going to have to enable that one to get either of, uh, either of the other two modules. Context UI, much like Views, has, a, has an engine and a Views UI. Um, if, if you don't want your administrators to actually be able to change things in your context, um, if it's more of a uh, mechanism for capturing configuration and, and moving it between sites and that type of thing, uh, you don't need that enabled. And then context layouts is one of the, uh, the layout systems that you would get out of the box with it. So once you have context UI, there's actually two places that, you're, that you'll typically use this. And what I'm going to show you is the, um, the dev branch of 7.x, because we've just finished uh, and committed a lot of work to some of the UI there. So this is your basic context administrative UI. You can come in and add new context. Each context is composed of a condition or set of conditions and reactions. Uh, and so out of the box, you have uh, a set of conditions where you can say this one should be active if another context is active. It should be active if uh, this, I mean, this particular menu item, if, you know, I own this particular node type, right? There's all kinds of reactions that you can have, I mean, conditions that you can have here. And then once those conditions are true, and you can say they can be true independently or they must all be true, uh, you can say, well, what do you want to have happen? And the reactions, so the one that's placement is the block reaction. And this is the one that, that I find we most frequently uh, use. And this is the one that you'll most frequently not use from this screen uh, if you want it to be very user friendly for your users. Um, but you can say, okay, uh, I want this set of blocks and I want to go in this particular region. Uh, the layout one 
is also uh, present from the blocks. So if you don't have uh, context layouts enabled, uh, you will not get, I'm looking for it. There's, a, there's an option here for the theme. Um, oh, and this theme doesn't support the layouts, that's what it is. There's an option to say, I want this particular layout, and that's based on whether or not your theme supports it. Um, and, and if I have time, I'll, we'll go through that. The interface that most people uh, you'll want to use for placement um, is you'll come in, you'll choose configure layout from any block. Uh, you'll be able to choose from the layouts that are active. We'll hide that. It'll highlight all of the regions. You can say what you want to put there. And so I'm gonna say, I wanna put uh, my puppies. So it'll put the block there. You can say you're done and that you wanna save your changes. And now you've just manipulated that layout or that, uh, the placement there. And once you have uh, lots of different layouts, you can drag things across regions and, and delete the blocks and that type of thing. But that's, that's the basics of what you get. All right. All right, so I'm uh, anchoring this uh, four-person relay. So hopefully do a better, a little bit better than the American team. Um, sorry. Um, so I'm showing off today a distribution of Drupal called Panoply. And it's, as I mentioned earlier, it bundles panels, panels IP, panelizer, and a number of other sort of custom pieces together. And this is an install of Panoply right out of the box. I turned on the demo content modules, so there's some content there. But the goal here is to like try to take out some of the Drupal administration into site building and creating pages. Because if I have a Drupal site, like one of the things that I want to do is add a page and control its layout. So to do that, um, with Panoply, you get two options to actually start to create pages. You get a content page, which is just a normal page node that's uh, panelized using the panelizer module, and it gives you some extra options. And you have the ability to create landing pages, which are using, the, it's using Page Manager just to create a general page. So I'll go ahead and add a landing page, and I'll just say landing page, and landing can be my thing, and I'll add it to the menu. And oh, that's all I need to get going. And now I actually have a page on my site that's in the main navigation, which is very cool. I haven't gone to the Drupal backend yet. Don't think I will. Um, the cool piece then is then at the bottom of this page, and by the way, every page, there's a customize this page and change layout on this page. If I hit customize, I get to bring up what I believe is the crown jewel of Drupal, which is the panel's IPE. Um, and it lets you add like information, uh, panel panes actually to, to a region on the page. So I can go ahead and I'll go ahead and just add a, a number of things here. These are using the fieldable panel panes module that creates entities. It's very similar to the bean module. But I'll go ahead and add a quick content list. We'll, um, we'll have it be content type my content page. I'll throw three things and I'll show the teasers, let's say, and I'll go ahead and save that. And now, well, bam, surprise, I have a landing page that has a bunch of content on it. So that's very cool. Now here's the really cool part, controlling your layout. So if I want to change the layout of this page, what do I do? I click this button that says change layout, and it brings up, I think we maybe are now up to 30 different layouts that are all like prepackaged with Panoply. They're all, they're all cross-browser, they're all responsive, and they have little pictures so you can see what they are. So I've got this one, which is just a single column, but I'll go ahead and add a, a sidebar to the page. And now I have a page that has a sidebar, which is great. So now let's go ahead and add an image to that because I might want to add an image. Um, so I've got this little widget here that says add image. I've got this demo image that I have, but I can go ahead and remove that and um, go ahead and upload one. And downloads maybe. Um, and I'll go ahead and add a picture of Mr. Jay Batson, who would approve of this demo. He's very into making pages. And um, oops, sorry. <laughs> There's a, this sort of this live update tool that's pretty cool with it. Um, so we'll try that one again. So these, it, what it basically is doing is creating like a fieldable panel pane like on the fly, which is sort of neat. So it'll like auto update the image. Let's we'll call it J. Um, and it's cool because I can actually upload it and I can sort of see it. I can make it reusable if I want. I can add it a link. Um, I can add a caption if I want, which I don't. And um, I can go ahead and save it. And now if I save, I've got a picture on the site, which is very cool. Um, let's go add some more stuff. 
I'll customize this. I'll go ahead. I'll add a list of links. People build a lot of Drupal sites. You probably have like a quick links box that you, you do, so we can add a link to Drupal. Even though I checked on my phone, it actually is down, which is sort of weird. Um, DrupalCon. Let's call this DrupalCon. And we'll call these links. And I can go ahead and add those. And now I have a list of links. And so I've started to make a page. Like, this is the kind of thing if you're like building a comp or doing Drupal, you'd be really interested in. So that's cool. Let's go ahead and cust let's change the layout again. So instead of two column, let's go ahead and add three column. I got a three column right there. Go ahead and save. OK, three column. And now I can start to play around. And maybe what I want to do is I'll take this, this uh, list of content over here. I'll put it in the sidebar. And it sort of condenses down because it has some cool responsive images. I go ahead and configure. And I got a bunch of options because this is actually a view. And there's really cool views and panels integration because Earl Miles works on both and makes them talk together. So Panoply sort of leveraged a lot of this. So instead of having a list of content, I'll maybe just do fields. Um, and maybe I won't. Um, maybe I'll only have two of them, let's say. And I can sort of see. And I can hit save. And now I have that. And then in the middle, I can decide maybe I'll make a map. This is the, the default to the Pantheon HQ. And I'll go ahead and make a map. And now I have a cool map on the page, which is sort of nice. Um, there's San Francisco. It's pretty hilly there, but it looks flat. Um, I mean, I'll go ahead and customize. Maybe I don't want the map, but I do want to put the picture of, of, of Jay right there so it sort of like bounces up, which is sort of cool. Maybe I don't. I'll put it down there. Um, I'll go ahead and add some more content, um, add a list of content here. Maybe I want to store this as a table, which is sort of neat. Um, maybe make the titles. Don't really want the image. And I'll go save. Now I have a list table data, which is neat. Go here. Maybe I'll add some text. Um, that's too much text. This is using a veggie lipsum, by the way, if you're a vegetarian and you want, um, you want demo content. It's a cool one. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then maybe I'll go ahead and make a, a, a carousel. Those are sort of fun. So I'll go ahead and remove this. And I have a picture of Dries's bicycle, which is sort of nice. And let's see. If it's a little bit bigger screen, you can see them both at the same time. But um, you'll see the, um, the end result, which is sort of fun. Um, bike. Ooh. No. And then we'll go ahead and hit Save there. And hit Save. And now I've got like a page that sort of I've customized and configured relatively quickly, which is neat. The last little bit is I can actually go ahead and you even can stylize these things. So I added all the Drupal styles, so we can make that thing blue. And um, now we've got a sort of page. And you know, it looks the way it looks. It's using the Bartik theme, so it has those kinds of styles. But Panoply will work in any theme, because all it's doing, same as Panels does, is it just takes over the content variable. And then everything else is sort of as your theme is. So if you have an existing site, you can put this on. Or if you're starting a new site, you can put it on. But the cool bit is that this like, change layout is true on this page. It's true on the default home page that comes with Panoply, so I could change change the layout here. It's also true on every single node page. These are node pages. There's a default that node pages have, but you can override them per node, which is very neat. And I think this is a really neat solution because it like gives you a central tool to like create really powerful landing pages. And like not once did I go into the Drupal backend to do it. So it's the kind of thing as a site builder that's really fast, but it's also the kind of thing for a Drupal product or if you turned it over to someone that uh, you could have and you can make a lot of really neat things. Thank you. I'm not showing anything now. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to be here to answer questions that people have. Yes. Yeah. I'm back to slide. Hello. Hello. All right. So there won't be a demo of any D8 stuff because it's still in development. If, but if, if you want to see a demo, come to my my uh, core conversation at the end of today. Cool. So uh, we're gonna, I guess, transition into, I guess, a Q&A period. So there's microphones. If anybody has questions, stand up. But in the meantime, um, as people are getting to that, I, I wanted to ask each of the people on the panel a question. Um, what are some sites out there that we might know of that are using your solutions? Um, so, energy.gov, which is the US Department of Energy's website, um, is what founded like the Bean module initially. 
Um, and uh, Robin Hood was a foundation in um, New York City. Um, they actually use, they're using template field and actually displaying um, SVG files for have dynamic Raphael JS driven by content, which is a really really cool use case. Um, there are several more, but I don't know. I'm sure. Um, I think um, if if if, if every, every oh, I'm sorry. Um, the first version of this play suite that's actually still is still running from like three years ago is on a website um, called uh, Studio Brussels. It, it's a radio station in Belgium, so any, if you're from Belgium, uh, Studio Brussels actually runs the first version of this play suite. Um, and it then was basically our, our test case because um, Studio Brussels has, I think, like 25 content types, something like that. So it's a really complex uh, site regarding content. and. Um, at some point, we were just like doing old style theming, um, and we had a lot of template files, and that got really, really messy when we had to do updates during development. It was just crazy. So, um, I think you're all is to brew.be. Um, have a look. It's the oldest version of this place we actually running. So, great. Um, I would say pretty much any site that, that phase two develops is probably using context in some form or, or another. Um, not, not except all. <laughs> a lot of the sites that phase two develops use, uses context in some form or another. Not always, not always for layout. Um, probably the easiest way to see it is to just download Open Public and take a look at, at, at it. Um, it uses context pretty heavily in all but, but like one particular little area where it uses some panels. Um, so that's probably the best way if you wanted to, to play with the approach that context takes to placement of the stuff to create it. Um, panels and, and Panelizer are obviously very popular modules, have 100,000 some installs across a lot of sites, probably a lot of people in this room. Um, Panoply is relatively new, it's just in beta 5 as of this DrupalCon, but one of the things that it's really good for, aside from just building general sites, is it's a good sort of base distribution for, for other distributions. So there's a higher education distribution called Open Academy that has a lot of like sort of higher education university style features that's based on Panoply. And um, the University of California at Berkeley uses that for a lot of their sites as sort of a solution to let individuals sort of, you know, customize their sites as, as, as higher ed workers. Um, if you're interested in trying Panoply, of course, you can download it from Drupal.org or on Pantheon. We let people spin up free, free sites to play around with the approach and you can play with the demo content and do the kind of demo I showed today. No one's running Drupal 8. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just to see in the audience, um, how many people are using panels or, or have used them before? Sam Boyer, raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> cool. What about um, context for a block layout? Display suite? Template field beam? <laughs> oh, sweet. Right on. You guys cool. are elite. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so can you talk a little bit about Drupal 8 and kind of how you, how you plan to kill all of these, if possible? Sure. So to some degree here, we're obviously running up against like time issues, um, which is always the case when you're working inside of core development. Um, but, you know, the real objective is to kind of take uh, basically what Matt demoed and get as close as we can to that within Drupal core. Um, it's a very powerful solution. It gives us the ability to essentially change layouts on every single page throughout the system as we have need. Um, and that's really important from like supporting um, install profiles and really giving people what they want sort of a perspective. Um, as to how uh, I, I intend on doing that, um, at the moment, we've done a lot of foundational work, uh, and I'll, I'll give a huge update on that um, in, my, in my core conversation today. Um, but, you know, we're really what we're doing is we're replicating a lot of the base foundational components that make up panels. Um, so a lot of CTools uh, components are actually uh, migrating into core, things like plugins and stuff like that, that everybody was already using pretty heavily, so it made sense for core to support it. Um, and then, you know, uh, as you'll see kind of in the demo that I've got today, 
Um, there are a lot of specifically modules that phase two is currently developing that even if we didn't go any further than the patch I'm going to show off today, um, we could kill off like three of the modules that they're having to maintain currently because m core would be capable of doing most of that stuff. Um, which I hope we all agree is actually a good thing. Um, so <laughs> I think they agree with me, so I don't really care. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, I mean, we, we really aren't at the, at like, even the panels level of doing things, much less like a panels everywhere panelizer solution, but we're working really hard to get there as quickly as we can, and obviously we need more helping hands, so if you're interested in that, which I sort of assume that you might be if you're in a layout session, you know, you should talk to me, and uh, we're going to start really trying to organize what needs to be done there, so. Cool, thanks. So, uh, one of the problems that a lot of our clients have is that they want to be able to see what their uh, layout changes are going to look like before um, either before th their um, their site users see it or they want to be able to stage these changes and, and allow it to be previewed by other people in the organization before it actually goes live. So um, a lot of ways that's handled is through the use of revisions. Um, do any or all of these solutions support revisions? Yeah, um, a panelizer will, will do revisions. Um, panels itself won't do revisions, although there's um, an, an entity revision scheduler module that'll help to do some of the sort of like sub revision support. Um, but that like a lot of the way that Panoply sort of helps to accomplish this is by letting you sort of drag and, and make changes on your site. But everything I was showing, if you, there's like a save button at the bottom, if you decided to hit cancel, for example, um, it would just revert to the way it was. And that's sort of a way, since you get to see it with the CSS and see how it looks, that you can just revert out if you, if you don't like it. Yeah, um, one, one more point on that is that um, panels in general kind of supports the ability to uh, build variants of pages. So like you could probably, if you needed to, have some sort of mechanism where um, you actually build it for a specific variant for people so that they can look at it. Once they approve it, you could, you know, clone that out to the main one or something like that. I don't know how that would work with Panelizer because I haven't messed with Panelizer much, but um, at least for like kind of a traditional panels approach, that will work as well. For context, that, that's really kind of dependent on how you how you structure the activations of your context. So if you if you use um, contexts that are set up to activate on the particular uh, value of a field, um, if you're using like context node or context entity field or one of the other modules that that offer those types of conditions, then uh, yes, it would it would support revisions in that mechanism because that value of the field will obviously be different um, for the page that you're on there, and that of course assumes we're talking about node pages and that type of things. Um, for things where you might want to stage uh, stage changes or in terms of placement on like a, a view page or that type of thing, uh, you'd have to go through some a little more customization there since there's no real underlying revision to the to the view. <coughs> I think, I mean, this place where it doesn't do content, I mean, it only, I think Panoply does a kind of mixture uh, of it, and this place we only does layouts, and I think, I think every module here is like dependent on C-tools and has exportable support by default, yep. which is good. If you don't do that, start doing it now. Uh, but basically, if you, <clears throat> if, if the client wants another layout, then um, you can just make your changes on your dev environment, then run the exportable thing that CTOS does, then put it in your repository, go to staging, do, uh, well, and then basically revert it, uh, or update or revert the exportable, uh, which has the display settings in, in them. So that's basically how we are doing, like, previewing or making changes to websites, I guess. So, but I think that applies to, like, every module in, in a way, uh, I think. Hello. You guys can ask questions too. Frank doesn't have to be the only person. Yeah, there is a mic yeah, in the middle. Yeah, there is. Please ask questions. Um, yeah, so since uh, everything that my solution proposes around the node, it supports anything that's on a revision. So that was actually the reason why we did it in the first place. So, um, for instance, um, the workbench, any, re any revision scheduler, or state machine, all those modules control workflow around the publishing of um, particular revision. Um, as far as previewing content before it's live, that's actually interesting because we actually, this, this question is not staged, I promise. Um, we um, actually just built and released a, a module called Site Preview System, SPS, which is built uh, part of the large-scale Drupal um, project. 
that allows you to take um, node revisions and stage them to be pushed, to pr pushed live on a single site, and also allows you to preview um, any revision based upon a, um, a collection tag. So, so for example, um, so for example, we have um, a you're doing a election results of um, Romney versus Obama. Um, Obama's going to win, and um, you want to stage all your content on your site, and you have the same same like page. You're using a page node layout. Like we're all using page node layouts. You want different revisions of that layout. So even using context, the context field module, which actually now supports revisions. I don't know if you do that or not. You did that, okay. Um, you can actually stage layout changes on the fly using this module with any of these solutions. And it works with panels also. We've actually tested it with Panelizer and it works great. Um, so you can, you can display entire site like it's gonna be live at a certain point in time. What's not necessarily related, it is related to your layout as far as all these solutions support it because they are based around content, um, which is how you get revisions, so. Cool. Microphone. I'll okay. repeat it. All right. Um, as a non-technical person, I have worked with clients who have implemented all four, not monopoly, but kind of like How do you, how would you go about selecting one of the four solutions? And I, and I feel that it's terribly confusing. <laughs> I'm going to be very honest. <laughs> So the question is, as a non-technical user, um, how would you go about making a decision between these four, these four solutions? Just use Display Suite. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I don't ever think there's ever a single solution for any problem, because I think that's closing off all your options. Um, if you always say one solution always fixes a single problem. All these have gr wonderful use cases. Um, if you're building a site where it's um, there's a short development period. Um, the solutions I proposed are, are mainly around higher development teams and larger projects. We have a lot of, a lot of customization. There's a lot of code still behind it. Um, if you want something that works great out of the box, Panoply is probably the best solution for, um, uh, and which, you know, just to throw up a, um, a, you know, a quick community site or something. I think that would be probably a great solution, in my, in my opinion, in context as well with some of the um, distributions we have out too. But, it depends on how much development support you want to do. If you want to do a lot of development support, you want a lot of control, and you want to, I would say, use mine, but I don't know what these guys say. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it's a tough question, it's true. Um, I mean, what? You use them together, you know? Yeah, I mean, um, there's been like, in the, in the beginning, the display suite was released, there was like this thing, hey, this is, this is panels, I mean, if, or this is going to be like a competitor of panels, which is actually not true. Um, true. Um, I mean, the only two people at that point that understood the exact, the exact difference at that point was Earl and me, and everyone in the world was fighting against, I mean, fighting, hey, I use panels, no, you do have to use display suite. No, they're doing the same thing. Actually, no, um, in my opinion, panels is a layout builder, and then you have all these kinds of uh, solutions like page manager, and it uses the panels um, layout builder and to, use, to create layouts. I guess that's that's basically it, and display suite is is I think one and one other key difference I think is um, display suite doesn't work or act on the global page level I, I guess um, I mean if you have an entity which which I mean for instance if you look at Panoply you can drag in a node in your right sidebar and then select view mode like create a new view mode called sidebar. And then the actual display of that node in the sidebar in Panoply or in panels, that, that layout you are going to configure and on the um, entity level um, thing. So that's the way that we choose. And, and, but you can really use them together. I mean, and. I would say to kind of answer the question between all these, it really depends on who's going to be building your site out. Um, if developers are building your site out, you might want to use a more developer-centric tool like um, Template Field and Bean. Um, if you want just regular, like, kind of traditional webmasters to build out the site, I mean, a lot of the tools that come with Panoply look really, really easy to use for those people. So kind of evaluating who your user base is is another, another step. Yeah, I was just going to add that, like, Open Academy actually uses both Panoply and Display Suite 
to accomplish its sort of like custom design because Display Suite's great for creating these these like custom rich view modes, and then Panoply lets you, as Swintel said, pick the view modes, and that that's a great combination to implement a complex layout, but like still allow for a lot of like end user customization. But I think to answer the question, I mean, it's going to depend on on your use case and depend how much end user interaction you need after the fact. And also, like what your team knows how to develop against, you know, like these solutions all have different. Like, you, you mean if you know how to do panels and you're into that, like it, it's a lot easier. If you're starting off new, it's really complicated. Panoply helps to get you a certain degree there, but like if you know context really well, like you only have X time and you need to develop the thing. And so, if you you know the tool you know really well is sometimes the best tool. Um, although hopefully it'll all change for D8. Hopefully. So ha having having done. Like I've used, I haven't used every single one of these tools, but early on in, in context's lifetime, um, I used it and panels together a lot. Um, but you know, I think, like for me at least, the answer to your question is that you use the one you're comfortable with. Um, what you really need to do is you need to invest in one of them, and the investment is different, right? Uh, like context is very capable. If it serves like 90% of your use cases, maybe that's all you ever need. You write out a template file for the other 10% or something. You know, if you fundamentally need something that's like, it's a lot more to learn, but might give you, you know, a bigger payoff, maybe you go and you learn page manager and panels or something like that. And each one of these solutions has their, their up and downs and, you know, um, it's really just about investing in one of them, I think, and kind of going forward. Obviously, in Drupal 8, we want to kind of unify that so that everybody can invest in the same one, but... Yeah, sure. <laughs> Hi. I'm Sam. I maintain panels. Um, so, uh, I would criticize panels for a minute here. Um, there are, there are, one thing that actually hasn't been mentioned in the scope of this discussion at all is one thing that panels provides that others don't is a framework for caching uh, and scaling that the other systems are not interested in, but um, at least as far as I know. Uh, but uh, uh, it provides hook points for, for doing granular caching of selected elements in a way that none of these other systems provide. So if you need to design, like a, if, you, if you have needs for doing some more high performance stuff or saying we've got a really expensive view over here and you know that views caching itself is problematic, um, then uh, uh, you might want to look at doing, you might want to look at using panels simply for, for that reason, that in addition to being a layout builder, it's also a, a, a display framework that allows for the granular caching of different parts of the page. The drawback, since I said I was going to criticize, uh, the situation that I tend to see happening on a lot of client sites is um, people build out They'll, they'll, you know, they'll add a new custom page here or there, and then there are like 15, 20, 30 variants stuck on that page. That is an unmaintainable situation. So um, you might want to consider not using panels or a panels page manager approach if, wow. <laughs> if you're likely to, um, uh, uh, if you're likely to have a lot of variations that would result in just, you know, like one or two off tweaks, that actually, that, that type of thing, you're, you're probably going to be able to handle a little bit better with context uh, because you can get yourself into a really untenable, unmanageable situation with giant numbers of panels uh, pretty, pretty easily. So, yeah. thank you. Another question. Uh, one more okay. thing, real quick. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, we, oh, sorry. We aren't we aren't uh, discussing it because none of us are necessarily experts at it. But rules module can actually place blocks in regions as well. Just FYI. I just quickly wanted to second on on the comment before, because um, like you can push in the content very very nicely with with context module, um, but in panels you just have you have to create another variant for every like. Thing that's a little bit different, and I wanted to see what what are the plans for Drupal 8 for 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 those different approaches. So um, there are like that's a very nuanced question, and the answer will be nuanced as well. Um, Panelizer actually buys us an awful lot there because um, like the way it approaches quote unquote variants is totally different. Um, it determines it through you know uh, there's actually just 
Like if you actually look in Page Manager, there'll be a panelizer variant that sits at the top of any of the places that can be panelized. And it makes the decisions before it routes off to any other variants. So hopefully that significantly reduces the number of variants you need for nodes or users or anything like that. Um, and then uh, if you've used Panels Everywhere, Panels Everywhere also has like a separate page that just is the default one if there is no page like no uh, layout specific to a particular um, URL. And so like it's the combination of all those things together that can significantly reduce the number of variants you actually need on a page by page basis. Uh, so like we fully admit that it, it might be an issue. The other thing to consider is that the router, if, if uh, Whiskey delivers everything it's trying to deliver, the router will be a lot more capable and nuanced as well. And so we might even be able to remove, um, say, if, if, you were, if you had node type variants, you know, one for page, one for article, one for image, something like that. That might actually be up a level and not on like a node percent node um, page. There might actually end up being specific pages dedicated to those because the, the router can determine that information earlier. Um, I don't know how that will shake out. We kind of have to figure out what, where all the connecting points are there and leverage it appropriately, and that's still all in development, so. Any other audience questions? <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah, sorry. Can you hang on to that? I just wanted to tag on the, the uh, response to the last question. I, I apologize. Yeah. Uh, fundamentally, the problem with panels is that, yeah, you create a new variant, and because you've got, you've got multiple layouts being used all over your site, whereas most of what we do in Drupal right now is we have one layout that we bend a lot. I believe that's, that's Earl's um, way of describing it. I have not given up on the, on the idea that we're going to have a system for doing more global injection uh, that's more like the blocks interface right now, so we'll kind of get to have our cake and eat it too. I don't think it's impossible, it's going to be tricky, but it, that will be the thing that, that makes it much easier for us to not have to just spin off tons of new variants. You globally configure, this block is going to show up on a bunch of these pages, pages, and then you've got all the full local control over the panel that actually runs, or the panel-y thing that actually runs that page. So the question in the back. Um, display suites has display suite forms to change the layout of uh, node edit page, for example. Mm -hmm. Does the other solutions have something similar for node edit form page, for right. example? So yes. the question is, <laughs> the question is, um, do do all these solutions have ways to modify the node edit form? So yeah, actually, um, the table field does. Um, I showed building out the input definitions. Those actually build out the um, node edit interface. So those are on a per template basis. So yeah, it does. We know, we know this place, yeah. it does. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'll add an ID. I forgot one module that also ships with display suite if you download it. That is indeed display suite forms that acts on any kind of entity form in your Drupal 7 installation. So. <coughs> I would say for context, it depends on whether or not you're triggering layout based on something attached to the node, right? So if there's, if there's a value in a field that you're using to say, I want two columns or three columns or four columns, then you just add that field to the node and you have a, a condition that, that watches for it and the reaction that, that takes care of, you know, subbing in a template or that type of thing. But there's not, there's not sort of out of the box something in context that's going to inject itself into node edit forms. Um, panels is really good for doing overriding of the node edit forms, and if, if you get into sort of real custom administrative screens, you can have different node edit forms for different node types and actually drag and drop the fields around. Um, Panoply actually ships with this as the default node edit screen, which is actually a two-column panel, but it can be extended, obviously, for different use cases. So this will look a lot like what it's going to look like in Drupal 8 in terms of having stuff on the left, which is sort of about your content and stuff on the right that's, that's more sort of data about it. But that um, this is something that I, when I was doing a lot of professional services, would customize for every site, just because the Drupal node edit screen, like honestly, it's not that good. And if you can like actually just drag and drop the fields around in ways that actually make a lot of sense, it, it's it's really powerful. Um, and that's just to create a, a variant against node edit. And if you want to see Panoply as an example of how to do one, but you can extend that for any node type or any condition you want. Sure. I haven't played a lot with uh, Panoply, but is it right that <clears throat> since it's using fieldable panes that you store field data in a different way 
So it would be kind of hard to move back to the more standard way of managing fields and content types. The, I mean, in terms of the panoply, like the, a lot of the widgets I showed, like the map and the spotlight, those are actually fieldable panel panes, which are just en entities that have you know, obviously fields attached to them. But those are sort of in addition to the standard node types. Like this is just a standard node type title and body, and that actually will work and can be panelized like that. The fieldable panel panes are more sort of additions for sidebars or other pieces of content. Um, I wouldn't see it, it's sort of more of an extension to what you already have as opposed to replacement for anything. And on that topic, we have every intention of putting that into core. Any other questions? We just have a couple minutes left. And there is a, if anybody doesn't want to ask a question in the, in the big room that we have, there is the boffs that are happening. Yeah, so where are we doing the boff? Boff is in the Montreal room, immediately following this. That is, is that in this? Do we know is that in this building? It's in the other building. You didn't put the map on here. It's because we weren't using Panoply. We the map. Map All right. I just got a quick question. One more um, question. So what about controlling layouts in themes versus controlling layouts in modules for those different approaches? Panels can do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, panel, like you can define layouts in your themes and panels will, will pick those up or you can define them in modules. Um, I, I don't have a strong preference either, either way. Um, maybe so. For context, um, the context layouts module is actually for that. So your theme would say, I have these particular layouts and these layouts have these regions and uh, that would be primarily the way that it interacts with themes. Um, if you would like, if, if you are using two themes on one website, and at this, at this point it's not possible for display suite to say the view mode of this article looks like this on that theme and something else on the other theme. So that's not possible. It's, it's also kind of a, uh, it's a field API problem, storage problem, which I probably won't be able to say, uh, solve anyway for Drupal 7. Um, hopefully Chris will solve that, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I did also want to mention, if you're using, um, a theme like uh, Omega and like the Delta module where the theme itself has lots of settings for controlling the layout, um, Delta comes with uh, uh, something for context to control it that way as well. I don't believe in using themes, so. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else's job, I'm gonna do that. Um, in the core, it's core solution, so mine's around core, so it's just your no GPO files. Um, and using view modes are a lot is a very big part of the or my solution in the node is using your, using view modes and and TPLs on the view modes really. So, cool. So that's it. We're out of time. I want to thank the uh, the panelists for being up here. Thanks everybody. <laughs> <laughs>